we also recognise, of course, that in the languages classroom, there are still challenges that we face that are difficult to overcome. And the most obvious of them is time on task. If you want to develop highly literate learners, there has to be the time available. So we often recognise that we do have limited time for language learning and for textual exploration, which limits uh, literacy development opportunities. We've got a lot to do. We talk about the crowded curriculum across the eight learning areas, but we've got a crowded curriculum just within our languages classrooms as well. Secondly, and quite importantly, increasingly, is the fact that writing systems, learning to read and write in alternative writing systems, requires sustained, focused attention to basic literacy skills, and that can be particularly problematic when you are on a limited time on task timetable. So there are things to consider. If literacies are transfer and de developmental, what can we as language teachers see in terms of the points of connection between literacies and teaching languages and the points of transfer between what we do and literacy development? Are these things clear to us? Are they self-evident to us? Or are these things that we have to work on and build upon? So can we see the points of connection? Can we see the points of transfer between literacy, particularly in the mainstream English language classroom where we expect and where there is a general assumption that literacy traditionally lies and our language classrooms. So are we able to find synergies and points of connections and, and ways of, if you like, collaborating uh, pedagogically between what is happening in the learners' English language learning and what is occurring in our more time-limited and in many ways ling linguistically more complex and challenging uh, languages classroom? It's how you negotiate with the English language literacy teachers to try to articulate what they're doing with what you're doing and back and forth. Because if you can build on what they're doing and they can build on what you're doing, you can maximize those miserable little minutes you get in a week. So you have to try and steal from the English language teacher, but in a way in which it's a collaborative arrangement, building on, transferring, making sure they know what you're doing and what you need. Uh, I think you can extend that by, in your planning documents, I think you need to explicitly name what are the, the, the literacy um, foci, strategies and learning intentions and where might you resource those from within the class or within the school or the community to, to make much more explicit how you can connect languages and their literacies. And then make sure you can use that to communicate with other teachers uh, in the school as well. So my message is, in considering all those perspectives, um, you are a literacy educator. Are you equipped to do that confidently? And if you're not, or you're sort of there, who um, and what resources are you going to draw upon and access to help you develop you um, in, this, in this area? And this is for you to consider where is literacy in my list of teaching priorities? Who is the best, most likely advocate for languages and literacies in my school? You need to pal up with that person or that group of people because together you will be much stronger than one teacher trying to do this all on uh, your own. You need to have um, a collection of or collective of or grouping of, of, of people who can work with you on this. The third question is, how can I harness student and community collaboration and expertise? I've always found that when I am in the classroom, and I much prefer being in um, school classrooms than anywhere else, that when I allow myself to be vulnerable and not be the person who knows everything in the classroom, the students are fantastic at correcting me and teaching me. And they are more attentive and they're more willing to experiment. So the dumber I am, the better they are. And I find it very useful because I learn a great deal from the students and hopefully they actually do learn from one another. So the one the message that I have is never be afraid to let the, the students be language brokers in your classroom and your language tutors. <laughs>